Welcome back to the Dark Mirror Podcast. I'm Iris. I'm Hax. And uh, before we recorded, we spent an hour Playing or two. Playing Mario Party. Mario Party and Clubhouse games, and we did not put much thought into what we're reading. Nope. We have no essential theme. Also, hello to the new camera, which is just the camera work I use for analog horror videos. The third new camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are we reading? Oh, I mean, we're reading a couple of different stories. The first one we're reading is called Never Use Cheat Codes on an Ouija Board. Second one is called Ouija? An Ouija Board. Ouija. Ouija. Whatever, you fuck. Next one is I found a series of videotapes in my basement. Yeah, we <laughs> written, got no general written theme. By, written by Liquid Dookie. Is that seriously the name of it? <laughs> yeah, written by Liquid Dookie. <laughs> I <laughs> can't wait to read the second one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who wants to re read which one? Uh, for the first one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Fuck! <laughs> I get to read liquid dookies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You get to read the shorter one. I don't know why you're mad. I'm mad because, uh... I was trying to think of a joke, but I couldn't, so, um... You're mad because you're not funny. I miss, f I miss meow. <laughs> You're as funny as blazing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever compare it to air me to them. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, here is why you should never use a cheat co code on a Ouija board. Okay. <laughs> I know it's Ouija. Who spells it like that? Okay, so, uh, uh... A bit of context for people watching here. Uh, when we're recording this, yesterday Will Smith hit Chris Pat, not Chris, Chris Pratt, Pratt, Chris Rock. So uh, <laughs> him saying Ouija. Um, I'm about to hit him with the. <laughs> <laughs> Who spells it like that? I expect people to call it a Ouija, anyways. Parker Brothers. At least it's not Luigi board. Luigi okay, board? so in my hometown. In in their hometown. There's a unique shop of oddities called Hacksworks. 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 <laughs> New brand. That I frequent. It is an old boutique that specializes in niche products that I describe as being vintage style with a modern spin. Their items include cloaks, pocket watches, labels, bizarre... Lapels. Labels. Labels. <laughs> bizarre art prints, lavish jewelry, and Victorian home decor, among other curiosities. Let's say it's a great place to visit if you're either put- if you're ever putting together a steampunk cosplay. Hacksworks is, without a doubt, my favorite place to window shop, but I rarely leave with anything. The prices are high, rightfully slow, so, and though I love the s- <laughs> slow. <laughs> yeah, uh, how big is this? <laughs> and who won Mario Party? And who won Mario Party before we filmed this? Who who got all strikes in that game of bowling on Clubhouse Games 51 <laughs> Worldwide Classic? Look, I could have gotten second place if Mario didn't, some po didn't, <laughs> didn't pull some bullshit out of his ass. I could have had second place. <laughs> Mario was a second place loser. This episode is just going to be a domestic violence case. <laughs> 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 anyway <laughs> and though i love the selection i can't really say i need anything in that they have to offer it would be different if i were a convention goer or financially stable enough to justify such luxury purchases i feel that but alas i am neither instead i relax in the shop's tranquil atmosphere and dr i love business for them whenever i get the chance to talk about the place it's a mutual a beneficial relationship. Looking for a perfect hot tub? Twenty hot tubs under ninety nine dollars a month. Uh, this was me reading an advertisement. Has your home been damaged? One day, however, a new product arrived at Hacks. One that I couldn't help but gush over. Oh. There, sitting on an easel behind the store's front window, was a large, handmade, one of a kind Ouija board. Ouija board. And the word work was beautiful. And the text was striking. Absolutely beautiful. It was weirdly sticky. 
Uh, <laughs> well, they did gush over it. <laughs> that I couldn't help but be captivated by it. I had to know where it came from and how much it was going for. Curious as ever. I made my way into the shop, walked right up to the owner, and inquired about the board's origins. He told me that it was a new piece sent to the shop by a friend of a friend who had inherited it from a relative. Don't worry about it. It was an heirloom that had been this per in this person's family for many years. Many years. Passed down from generation to generation. Too spooked by the board to continue the tr tradition, the man donated it to Hacksworks. The more the owner and I talked about it, the more I wanted the board for myself. I was never big on the occult or the paranormal. This shit made me gush <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> made me gush so hard I, ha I had to investigate a Bethesda cult. <laughs> that was such a stupid, creepy pasta. <laughs> I don't even remember how it went, but I guess that's a good Something thing. about Fallout 76 being tied to real-world events. Oh, yeah. And the occult. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you want to put what it was in the comments, comment Bethesda cult. I wouldn't know for no other reason than to say, A, I owned it. It would be a conversation piece and an item I would proudly show off in my... To my friends and family. Look, I got a fucking Ouija board. <laughs> the downside? The owner wanted $500, $500 for it. $500 for a Ouija board? After a few rounds of ha haggling with the owner, we came to an agreement. He would put the Ouija board aside After for me. a few rounds of, of Mario Party. And I would make weekly payments until I paid it, it was paid off. He even offered me a slight, a slight friends and family discount for being a regular at the shop. After that was said and done, I would be paying $432. That was still a hefty price tag, but I was grateful for the compromise and glad he agreed to the conditions. A grueling nine weeks late. Are, 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 are you calculating that? You only that? got a discount of 68 bucks for it? I mean, I guess that's not bad. That's only like 15%. Yeah, well, 15% or more is what you can save on car insurance. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> a grueling nine weeks later i was at the proud owner of my bit i was at i was the proud owner of my very own spirit board it came in an equally well crafted wooden chest upon which the word ouija was etched along with it was presumably the year it was made 1913 that was a good movie I don't remember that movie. Upon opening it up at <laughs> home, I noticed a few extras that came with it. Advertisements. Inside the chest, alongside the board, was an ivory planchette. I don't even know what that is. An empty picture frame. And a small, but faded, pamphlet titled User Manual. Just in case you don't know how to work a fucking Ouija board. Slenderman. Why'd you say Slenderman? Because it was part of the fucking Everman hybrid theme. It was where Slenderman was doing his little side to side thing in the doorway. And, and how many stars did you get in Mario Party? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> okay. I could have had two, but I guess I was too poor. The pamphlet's contents consisted of diagrams and instructions over explaining to use the use of the board. It was more or less boiled down to place your hands on the planchette and wait oh, for it to move. We should do. That's what our Dark Manor uh, Halloween special should be. We use a Ouija board. We already agreed what the uh, uh, Dark Manor Halloween special is going to be. That should be the Christmas special then. <laughs> I don't have a Ouija board. We can buy one. Well, so are we gonna like stage it or something? Cause like it's not gonna work. I mean, we can stage it. As I stare directly into the camera, we can stage it all right. <laughs> what I found peculiar was a section towards the back of the manual with a heading that read "cheat sheet." Okay, so the oh, it says hey, move the plancha up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Move it to the B. Move it to the A. 
Move it to the okay, and then you're gonna get fucked. Not the ass. It went like this. My ghost penis. Mm -mm. Want a simple way to see your loved ones in the afterlife? Fear not. We have just the solution. Introducing the Ouija board cheat sheet. What is this being read by the Riddler? Riddler was. If you want justice, I'm please not talking about from the lie. Batman. I'm just talking about a Riddler. No, I'm, I'm trying to go with classic old time person, spokesperson, man. Introducing the Ouija board. That's Beach what Street. I'm saying. With this easy to follow guide, you'll be able to see those betrayed from you and know that they're okay. Simply follow these instructions. Place the frame, including your kit, directly in front of the board in an upright position. Choose one of the following 29 character sequences and place your planchette over the letters and numbers accordingly. The year in which you chose and loved one was born is represented by the four question marks at the start of the sequence. The year in which they pass is represented by the four question marks at the end. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Are we seriously going to go through all the fucking quizzes? <laughs> Okay, so there's a list of, like, a bunch of fucking cheat codes. L four e t three question mark, 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 Z e o l b t e i w b a o e h t we're not doing this. R-I-T-D-E, question mark, Be sure to visualize the person in your mind as you move the planchette across the board. If done correctly, a seal image of your loved one should appear within the frame. However... Briefly. Disclaimer! This is not, a, not precise. a precise science and results may vary. <laughs> Each string of characters works differently, depending on the person, the time of day, and the area in which you are located, represent relative to the spirit realm. If one sequence doesn't work for it, not. You can always try another. Please bear in mind that this is one way window. Your loved one will not be able to communicate with you with your image services. Any attempt to speak with them will be met with silence. Enjoy. I chuckled. That was, was clearly an attempt at horror at by humor. the maker. At humor. By the maker of this board. Distastefully, perhaps. But it was certainly comical. Imagine that. Entering a board into a Ouija board. Enter, entering a code into a Ouija board. And receiving a snapshot of the other side. How ridiculous. Still. Can't you catch the ghost in 4K? Still. Something about the Ouija board cheat sheet irked me. Was the picture's frame only purpose to accompany the joke? Shouldn't the manual have clarified this a little further? And who exactly was the joke meant for anyway? This board was one of a kind, more than likely commissioned by its original owner, which was such a beautifully crafted piece, really meant to be nothing more than a gag gift? I mean, imagine if the Great Maker just runs up to a spirit and just says, Hey, motherfucker, get caught in 4K! <laughs> <laughs> You're getting sent up to the Ouija board! <laughs> the gag board. Having a gag myself, <laughs> I set the thing up, frame aim and all, whether it was out of boredom or a desire to prove to myself the cheat sheet really was a load of malarkey, I decided to follow the instructions to a T. I grabbed a beer, chose a character sequence, and recalled the birth dates of my favorite family pet, Scratches. <laughs> okay, so are we gonna hear Blazing's voice on the side? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, uh, for all those who don't know, which if you're watching this on Gormico, you know I, you know I know we know that's it. Uh, I do an audio drum. I produce and create an audio drama called The Corrupted World, and the character Scratches is someone who exists and is the main character of the third episode and it's played by our friend Bl blazing um <laughs> so uh the funny thing is scratches in the care like it in it does have a dog like it, the, the dog's name scratches? no the dog's <laughs> name snuggles yeah the dog fucking dies Spo spoiler alert all you dogs mean, like, go to heaven right see how it goes we'll do it with iris's dog which one? The only one in this house. Okay, good. <laughs> what? Is there a dead one in the backyard? No, there's one of my dad's. Oh, well, we can do that one too. After placing the planchette <laughs> over the corresponding characters, I looked up at the frame. I saw 
I swore I saw a milky white fog manifest behind the glass. No image, just cloudy particles dancing about like dust brush off an old book. To make sure I wasn't seeing things, I repeated the process, and to my surprise, it happened again and again. With each subsequent use, the smoky substance grew in visibility. It was still, it was still faint, but entirely noticeable. Several thoughts swam around my brain, many of which sunk into the abyss of my collective thoughts. One, however, kept coming up in the air. It was silly, but I kept considering the possibility that maybe, just maybe, I, the cheat sheet was legitimate. Crazy, I know, but the prospects of having a truly supernatural artifact were exciting. Even if there was a rational explanation for what I had seen, I was at least going to have some fun playing around with the thing. Uh, what website are we reading this on? Creepypasta.com Yeah, I wonder if this is gonna work. Probably not. And so, I took off. I called up my parents and collected the dates of various relatives who had passed away. I told them I was doing that Ancestry.com thing to learn more about my heritage. Deceptive, yes. But they wouldn't have been so understanding if I told them I was dabbling in the dark arts. To gathering information I needed, I reclaimed my seat in front of the board. I had a few more beers by this point, so my motor skills were not exactly in perfect working order. Because of the... You saw that, right? Yeah. Well, because of this... <laughs> uh, t t t t t t t t because of this, I fucked up the first sequence. Using my great aunt Linda's birth and death years, I entered the code correctly, save for the O. You accidentally placed the planchette over the O in the Ouija logo at the top of the board. What happened next was surprising. I well, I got shot 27 times. <laughs> in the chest. I noticed my mistake and expected the frame to remain dormant, but this was not the case. To my astonishment, a clear image came into focus behind the glass. What I saw was the outline of a structure sewn into a white, foggy backdrop. It was quickly as it came, as quickly as I came, <laughs> the image faded out of view, leaving me baffled. What was I seeing exactly? A building in the afterlife? Is that where buildings went upon being demolished? Or was the next world industrialized, much like Earth? Enthralled by the idea of having a peek into heaven's inner workings, I fudged up some more sequences. I plugged in random years, past, present, and future, and made up my own codes. There was no rhyme or reason to my methods, I was basically punching in random combinations to see what would happen. I was rewarded with little results, only a couple of my codes worked, and the images that came out were too blurry to make out any discernible features. Advertisements! Despite mostly failing in my endeavors, I kept at it, sequence after sequence. I continued to move the planchette across the wood. I grew tired, but my curiosity far outweighed my eyelids. Towards the wee hours of early morning, I struck gold. One of my made-up codes worked, giving me a proper glimpse into what comes after. I would find it funny if one of his made-up codes would just... One of the uh, ones on the on like the back <laughs> sheet, and he just, he just randomly did it. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As clear as day, I saw a bustling street filled with what I assume were souls of the departed. In addition to people, there were cars, buildings, and traffic signs, the likes of which I had never seen. It was similar to Earth scenery, but significantly different. Surrounded by a flood of light and white fog, the landscape felt altogether more peaceful, for lack of a better description. Honestly, for something I look forward to being a part of in the distant future, of course. I wasn't satisfied with my find, but I couldn't stop there. Using different variations of the same sequence, oh god, I pressed on. To my delight, I was greeted with more and more images of the afterlife, all which bore great clarity, allowing me to see even the finest of details. Here are some of the things I saw. Can we get an announcer? Skyscrapers! Fall top! Fall top! Fall towers. Far ta far taller than their earthly <laughs> counterparts. Transparent bridges connecting various point parts of the heavenly community. Bioluminescent I can get that, but how but <laughs> no, I can't do that. Obviously not. <laughs> Bioluminescent trees and wildlife. Parentheses mostly scattered about, but I didn't it find one large forest. Parentheses. Where did I get the other one? <laughs> He's Glimmering not. pools of water around every corner. You know, souls, they love to swim. Strange weather Especially patterns. Every now and then I'd see clouds, but they'd change color from image to image. One of them was piss yellow. 
With every sequence, I found something new and unusual on I the other finish side. I this, because, like, you're reading the second story. Okay. With every sequence, I found something new and unusual on the other side. I said that. I was an explorer of sorts, sorts discovering vast sections of land in uncharted territory. This is now my hobby of choice. Unfortunately for me, this one, this was one that wouldn't last. <sighs> he was going to be shot 27 times in the chest. In an attempt to uh, take things a bit further, I grabbed a camera, a pencil, and paper. I would record my findings things, and write down points of interest. I was more or less setting out to make a map of heaven. It would be t a tough project, but one I, I would most certainly enjoy. Advertisements. Now, by this point, it was around 8 o'clock in the morning. I'd been at it for about 9 hours straight, and I was more than ready to take a break and catch some shut-eye. I decided it would be best to start my cartography project after a quick nap. But I wanted to try one more sequence before going to bed. I made up another variation of jackpot uh, code, code and entered it, it into the Ouija board. Then I watched with bathed breast as a familiar white particle, as familiar white particles came together like puzzle pieces to form another heavenly landscape. The anticipation was torture. I felt like an addict, biding my time as I waited for the heroin to take effect. I may have been a little obsessed, but at least the way I got my Kicks was harmless, or so I thought. Dun dun dun. Doesn't say dun dun dun. Just I was about to receive my fix. Something strange happened. The pieces of the image swirled around at high speeds before revealing a blank, dark background. White letters then faded into view, creating a very clear message. Stop! You violated the law. Perplexed. I tried another sequence. Then another. Then another. Each time... I was greeted with the same word. I even tried older codes that I knew worked, but to no avail. For the entire hour, I tried it and I tried, begging the board to work again, to restore its supernatural properties. Eventually, I got one code to work, but not in the way I'd hoped. Upon using the code, old images resurfaced, cycling backwards like slides in a projector. In every one of them, something was amiss. It was distant at first. But as a frame cycled through the images, it came closer to the foreground. It appeared to be some sort of shadowy figure. Oh my god, is it a trailer? No reaction, huh? No reaction. I'm watching every man <laughs> Pitch black and faceless. Like is a black cloak suspended brother? in the shape of a person. Within a few moments, things took a turn for the worse. The darkness stayed, but the scenery changed. The dark From matter? the app. You think you're so funny, huh? Yeah. Nope. A live slug reaction. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking perfect. I saw a, I saw a little bit of his Instagram DMs, and the thing that was sent to him was as an image just called Life Slug Reaction. <laughs> it was very convenient on the, uh, the times. <laughs> the darkness stayed, but the seer changed. From the afterlife to this life, I saw still frames of my family and friends here on Earth. The shadowy figure looming behind them. I helplessly watched as it crept up on them, inching closer and closer to contact. I was horrified. <sighs> Before the figure could reach out and touch my loved ones, the slideshow ceased. For a moment, the frame was empty. Void of the horrors that once glanced behind the glass. Feed the habit. I was granted a breather, but not for too long. After another moment or two... For another moment or two, we need to take a moment or two for silence. Thank you, Chester. We're glad you agree. After another er, moment or two, one last image filled the frame. It was... Me. Sitting in front of the Ouija board... Just as I was then. I might as well have been staring at a reflection staring directly behind me. However. Standing behind... Directly... You standing directly it. behind <laughs> me, however, was the cloaked figure. It reached down and touched the back of my neck. I felt its cold fingers slide across my skin. Cha-cha real smooth. <laughs> Breaking free of my initial shock, I jumped out and ran for the door. I left my house, tired and terrified. I didn't return until the following day. Where'd you go? After everything that's 
happened. I can only guess I pissed off some angelic being upstairs by poking around its home. I saw things I never should have been able to see and overstayed my welcome, breaking some sort of divine law in the process. Does this mean I've been in disposed of the board. I've yeah. since disposed of the board, but my experience has stayed with me. I'm always looking over my shoulder and constantly checking on my family and friends to make sure they're okay. So far, so good. Though I'm alive, I can't help but feel I'm closer to death than I ever been. Yesterday, I almost walked on to oncoming traffic. A passerby had to pull me back. This morning, I felt the elevator at my work wobble a bit, and I swear it was about to fall. Maybe it's paranorma. paranoia. Paranormal. May maybe I'm just shaken by what I saw and felt. No matter what's going on, I'm going to play it safe from here on out. Moral of the story, don't fuck around with Ouija boards. Or don't... <laughs> this guy pisses me off. Okay, so... I understand wanting to map out the afterlife. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> For me when I read the story. <laughs> I understand wanting to map out the afterlife. It's cool, interesting, it's awesome sounding, very spectacular, molecular, but stupid. But he didn't, he, he could have just messed with the fuck, he could have just gone with the same fucking codes and only did it once in a wh little while and be completely fine. Yeah. It would have taken a lot longer to do what he wanted, he's, but he still would have done it. He's definitely not going to heaven. Yeah. He's vanished. The, the concept of the uh, supernatural being coming, that's been done to death, but it also does kind of work here. For the story. At least it doesn't end with it fucking killing him. Yeah. Like, that's that's a plus. It was more just like a warning to fucking stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was alright. For something called Don't Fuck With Cheat Codes on Ouija Boards, it was alright. Yeah. I would give it like a seven. I give it a seven. Yeah. So. So you want to load up your your end of the bargain? It's my end of the bargain. Your creep pasta. Oh. Technically, they're both mine. Yeah, but I not. picked out the stories, so if they suck, blame it on ours. <laughs> Next one, I found a series of videotapes in my basement by Liquid Beat. <laughs> Part 1. There are only a handful of events in your life that you remember where you were. For many Americans, such as myself, 9-11 was one. For the older God generation, damn. the assassination of John F. Kennedy was another. <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, what's, what's the review count for this? 8.42 out of 10. Okay. You can continue. For me, the day my parents died. <laughs> I hope no one has to go through the pain I went through that snowy January evening. And if you have the unfortunate, the unfortunate luck to have experienced that kind of trauma, then my thoughts are with you. Too late. Advertisements! Gosh, this saves me so much time. I've been waiting on something like this. Jackpot. 4.7 rating. That was an ad. <laughs> Next one is, how is it this big? I was close with my parents. My father, a college professor, always told me about the importance of getting good grades and staying in school. My mother, a nurse, always told me to help others in their times of need. Get to the basement! <laughs> That's what I said to the kids. Okay, fucking Mr. Bear looking ass. <laughs> They were perfect role models for me, and the day they died was the day a part of me died as well. Their car slid off an embankment in the snow and ice and crashed, killing them almost instantly. Oh, I, I can tell where this is going. Is this still recording? Yes, it is. Yeah. I was at the bar with a few friends and my fiancé at the time when I received the phone call from the local police. I was just checking. Yeah. Just put your head in the way, we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was at college when the yeah, I was at college when it happened, and unfortunately nearly four hundred miles away. 
The news hit me like a ton of bricks, and I could all I could do was stare endlessly into the background. The lights can, can were I guess on, what's but no happen? one was home. If can that I, makes can any I guess sense. what's gonna happen? Yeah, he's gonna find the tapes in his basement, and they're going to be just dramatic. Uh, you know that scene in Civil War where Iron Man saw the security footage of oh, his yeah. parents dying? Yeah, it's gonna be that. Is Bucky gonna come in and like kill his parents? <laughs> nah, it's gonna be you. After the funeral, my brother Joe, mama, and I were going through their house to get their belongings out so the home could either be sold, rented out, become property of the blank. Oh, into the bank. And the familiar smell of the home reminded me of better times. Times where I woke up on Christmas morning to see a Nintendo 64 and Pokemon Stadium waiting for me. I got you know, yeah. those were good times. That's right. I lost my place, so I didn't yet actually think that was in it. <laughs> it was. Like an episode of Scooby-Doo, Joe Mama and I would split up to make the job easier. I would be in charge of the basement. Why? The main why? Floor. Why have that allegory in here? <laughs> I don't know. I would be in charge of the basement and main floor, while Joe Mama would be in charge of the top floor and attic area. We started on the main floor, mainly because I still had this ir irrational fear of the basement. When I was younger, I fell down the steps and broke both of my legs. <laughs> <laughs> And my right wrist in the process. After That's all, unrealistic. <laughs> Hold on, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> all these years later, and it's still implanted in my mind. Hours went by, and after taking a break to sit down, rest, and enjoy a cold beer, I opened the door to the basement. As and then I, he did the same thing. <laughs> uh, as I looked down the narrow flight of stairs, someone dropped a bunch of balls down in the kitchen. <laughs> Uh, as I looked down the narrow flight of stairs, memories of eight-year-old me falling down and breaking my bones flashed before my eyes. <laughs> I gulped and took it one step at a time. Once in the basement, the old musty smell can became familiar with my nostrils. I looked over toward the single window in the basement, where a framed photo of my mother and father hung below it. There was a time where my father wanted to make the basement a lower level family room, but the hanged photo was as far as he got. Hang. Just like his father. Where was I? Where the fuck is that? Right there. Uh, uh, Mother and I, father hung the wallet. I, I, I'm sorry, I completely lo lost my place. <laughs> right there. Okay. There was a time where my father uh, wanted to make it a. Wait, how did. Where am I? Uh, uh, there was a time where my father wanted to make the basement a lower level family room, but the hanged photo is as far as he got. Under the stairwell, there were a few boxes from previous years that have yet to be unpacked. I pulled up an old wooden chair and began to search through the boxes, hoping I'd find something worthy keeping. The first box were just holiday decorations. Christmas, Halloween, hell, even Thanksgiving. You know you're a white family if you decorate for Thanksgiving. My brother and, and his wife are very white then. Yeah. Yeah. Are you white? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was very festive, no matter the holiday. Christmas for life. I don't know what that means. You were on a horror podcast and your favorite holiday is Christmas. I like what I like, okay? What, do you like Halloween? Yeah! I bet you like St. Patrick's Day. No. <laughs> Who likes St. Patrick's Day? Irish people? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I set it off to the side and pulled the next box closer to me. There was an old white binder that had hundreds of Pokemon cards in the sleeves. My man! I felt Can like I have to I... show Michelle this one. <laughs> <laughs> show Michelle this one. I felt like I had just discovered gold in the form of these little paper cards. I agree, my man. I flipped through the pages, just smiling from ear to ear. From those of you who are too young or too old to appreciate Pokemon cards, it was the greatest thing for an eight-year-old kid in the '90s. That's the greatest thing for kids now. Are you I, kidding me? I, yeah, I'm sorry. Why you say that when it? When was this? Hold on. When was this published? This year. 2019. Two years ago. 
Three okay, so three. this was right below. This was right before the big boom of of uh, popularity again, of, po yeah. of Pokemon cards. Hell, I even went to a few tournaments and won badges. Advertisements. The rest of the box was almost uneventful. There were some old pieces of art that Joe Mama and I drew in class, <laughs> but nothing worth keeping. As I searched through the remaining boxes, I thought for sure there was nothing at all worth keeping. The last box just had an old silverware and plates, half of which were cracked and broken. But there's some supposed to be tapes in the basement! We'll get there, Marble Hornets. I pulled out my phone to turn the flashlight on the search... To f turn the flashlight on. The search on... That's an actual typo. <laughs> yeah. Under the stairwell if I miss anything. And that is when I saw a small brown... Well, there you go. A small brown box tucked into the back corner. You know what this actually does remind me of? What? Always watching a Marvel Hornet story. I still never watch it. I never want to. Is it on Amazon Prime? Uh, it's... It's on fucking Paramount Plus, I believe. Yay. <sighs> on my hands and knees, I crawled under the stairwell to grab the box. The box was covered in dust, seemingly untouched in at least a decade. As I wiped the dust off, I opened the box to see a whole set of videotapes. Unmarked. This is Marble Hornets. Intrigued, I grabbed the Pokemon binder and the other no, materials. No, 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 no. You give Jay and Alex enough shit as it is. <laughs> they, they, they mark their tapes. Not in the beginning. Yeah, they fucking did. In the beginning, Jay said most of the tapes were unmarked and unlabeled. Okay, Jay marked all his tapes. Yes. Tim didn't either. I grabbed the Pokemon binder and the other materials that I deemed worthy to keep, put in the box Brian of videotapes, and headed tapes. upstairs. Huh? Brian would have marked his tapes. I'm pretty sure Brian did mark his tapes. Yeah. <laughs> Once I exited the darkness of the basement and ha embraced the light of the room, I saw Joe Mama sitting on the couch, smoking a cigar. Took you long, you know. He said sarcastically. Where did you get those cigars? You don't even smoke. I found them upstairs. There's a high quality sto- There are high quality stogies, TJ. Stogies. Stogies, TJ. I think my dad- Dad was saving them for a special occasion. I couldn't help but feel disgusted that my brother would smoke a cigar that her dad was saving for a special occasion, knowing damn well that less than a week ago he passed away. I sat next to him on the couch and placed the box on the coffee table in front. Why in the fuck would you put that dusty ass box on this good table? Good question, but I just smirked and shrugged it off. Look, dude, my old Pokemon binder. I bet some of these cards are worth a good penny, especially since they look to be in good condition. Yeah, you can sell them all and make a five cents profit from all that money mom and dad wasted on those things. Good investment. I set the binder to the, my side and pulled out the first video tape. This guy saw. probably hasn't been on Twitch. <laughs> I don't think he's been on anything to not know how valuable Pokemon cards are. I don't fucking like Pokemon, yet I still know how valuable a lot of them are. Exactly, you should start investing. This isn't an NFT. You could get some pretty rare Pokemon cards. Check these out. Yeah, check these out. Want to watch some home movies and laugh at how fucking cringy we were? I said, waving the videotape in front of my brother. Yeah, let's pop those on into the VHS player. Oh, wait a minute, it's 2017. No one uses those anymore. Hold on, this was made in 2019, but was set two years prior to that? I mean, guys talking past tense. Like, it's pretty easy to, for you to talk about an experience that happened a while ago. Like, look at 1990s E9. Fair enough. He had a point, but I knew something he didn't. The secret compartment I made when I was younger in my room upstairs. Excuse me. I hopped up and ran upstairs to my old room. It was empty, but I knew what to look for. In the floor in my closet, I made a makeshift compartment to hide. Well, adult-themed movies and magazines. In the compartment was an old VHS player that I would hook up to my TV one one when no one was home and watch said movies. I ran downstairs with the VHS player in my hands and a giant grin on my face. Thank God I was a smart little pervert. I said, holding the VHS player above my head. Oh look, you found a VHS. But please tell me how you, how that ancient thing is going to plug into this new TV. Are you going to science the shit out of this too? Again, another good point, but I knew better. When you were searching upstairs, did you find an older television? 
Yeah, but... All I needed to know. I told him to follow me upstairs while I went to the attic to find my old television. I brought the television back downstairs and plugged it in, along with the VHS player. Alright, wanna take bets on what the first video is? I'm gonna guess your 10th birthday party where you pissed your pants from the clown. <laughs> I will say, it is some- it is somewhat, uh... It, it was- it's somewhat confusing as to who's talking, sometimes. But I think you can take a guess. Well, yeah, but we'll, like we'll it, just go with and just it see would, how things go. It would like this is just an essential writing tip that my creative writing teacher taught me. If you're going to have actions take place ace in between dialogue, you're going to have to reaffirm who's talking at the start of uh, of each new branch or each new cut. Anyway, right. shut the hey, fuck Mr. up, Mr. Rider. I guess old wounds never heal. Oh, I thought I said I pooped. I popped the first tape in and walked backward, making sure it was loading up. The all too familiar blue screen appeared shortly do, do, before do, the do, video started do, up. Do, 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 do. What are you doing? It's a ricochet theme. Oh, there it is. I took a seat on the couch next to Joe Mama as we watched the video begin to play. It was grainy and dark, but we could make out movement from the side. What the fuck is this? Some kind of backward-ass snuff film? Joe said in a mocking tone. The darkness soon disappeared as a light kicked on without warning. There, we saw a male and female in white coats with white masks covering their faces. Oh is my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. We had the same fucking thought. <laughs> if this is gonna get racial, are we... Yeah, are we posting this? I will say, if this does, I think we're going to cut it here. Yeah. Like, we'll, uh, we'll get to as far as we can, and then we'll stop. Yeah. But then again, at least it's not being, like, they're not glorifying it. Okay. You, you, you know, 1999? Yeah. I just read ahead, and I think it's the same type of... Okay, idea. thank God. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle of the room was a lifeless body of a young boy, laying on his back with a black tarp over his body. We saw the feet and arms dangling off the side. Okay, what the fuck? Joe said, leaning forward. Turn this shit off, dude. This is some kind of illegal shit. I was a bit confused what I was watching. I gulped and continued watching, despite Joe's pleas to turn it off. There was no sound to the video, just the video itself. The two white-dressed individuals nodded as a third individual came out from the background. It had to be at least seven feet tall. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> it's Slender Man. It was lanky and looks like looked like as it, as he, hold on, it fucking it was lanky and looked as if he hadn't eaten in quite some time. It it was lanky, but called it he. Where are we? Pronouns. <laughs> its arms were very long, almost touching the ground. Its neck was elongated as well, but its head was very small. Almost comically small. It did not look human at all. The creature began to slowly surround the lifeless body of the boy before he placed one of its long legs on the table where the boy was laying. It only had three toes from what we could see, but that just could that could just be the bad quality of the video. Joe Mama and I watched in horror as this creature surrounded the child, but the real horror happened after it mounted the child and began to drag its Fuck. tongue across the boy's cheek. The tongue was purple in color, very long and very skinny, almost like a serpent. Turn this shit off, TJ! Joe screamed. I didn't listen. I was almost in a trance. I had no idea what I was watching, but whatever that creature was, it wasn't human, nor anything I've ever seen before. The creature dragged its tongue down the face and neck of the child before placing its hands on the child's face. The creature was, as a, uh, yeah, the creature was in a squatting pose above the child, but its arms and legs were so long that it looked like it as if you were standing. Joe got up without hesitation and turned the television off before we saw what was next. Dude, I fucking told you to turn that shit off. Whatever this is, this isn't legal. We need to show this to the fucking cops, man. Where did mom and dad get this shit and why did they have it? That's the $64,000 question now, isn't it? Joe, we have to watch these before we give them to the authorities. What if they're just some homemade horror film or something? We have to watch to make sure it's real and not something made up, or else the authorities are just going to laugh at us for being scared by a work of fiction. Reluctantly, Joe sat down and agreed, as we turned the television back on. 
I rewound back to the part where we last left off, which was the creature squatting above the lifeless child with its hands on the child's face and head. The creature dragged its finger across the cheek of the child, and its nail was so sharp it left a visible cut across the child's face. I think that thing is coming for us. <laughs> that is when my eyes widened and looked at Joe. Joe? What? Your scar. Joe's eyes widened. The cut across the child's left cheek was very similar to the scar across Joe's face that apparently happened after he fell off his bicycle bicycle at a young age. He never remembered it, but that's what it, we were told. I guess he was too tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'll apologize to Luke for stealing their joke. Yeah. What the fuck? There you go. Maybe it was just a coincidence, but things were starting to add up. The creature grabbed the leg of the child and began to drag its. Oh god, I don't know where this is going. The creature grabbed the leg of the child and began to drag its tongue up and down the left leg, as if it were enjoying the taste and smell of the child. I gulped as I jumped up and paused the VHS, the tape from the VHS. That's a that's a good idea. Joe, look in the background. What do you see? I don't see shit, dude. It's so old and grainy. Look in the background, by the window, then look under. What does that look like? Joe leaned closer to the television and squinted to get a better view. Shit, looks like a picture or something. I gulped my fear and remembered the picture hanging below the window in our basement. The basement directly below our feet. I hit play against my better judgment, mind you, and sat back down. Hold on, I'm reading for it just to make sure nothing got weird. I don't think it would. I hit play against my better judgment, mind you, and sat back down. The creature continued to drag its tongue across the leg of the child before hopping down from the bed. It stood straight up and held its arms to its side. The knuckles touched the ground and it was so tall that its head was out of view of the camera. The man and woman dressed in white, the man in woman dressed in white, what? nodded their heads as the creature bolted out of camera view. The man in white proceeded to walk toward the camera and turn it off as the screen turned to static. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck was that, TJ? What the fuck? I tried to calm Joe Mama down, but hell, even I was perplexed. I looked down into the box and realized there were more videos, but I did not want to look at what was next. I popped the first video out and put it to the side as I sat down on the couch next to Joe Mama, who looked as if he had just seen a ghost. My question, if we could see the body of the child and see where the thing was on the kid and what it was doing, doesn't that mean we should have at least seen part of the face of the kid? So doesn't that mean they should have known, besides just the scar, that this was Joe? Yeah, probably. Ah, so they're stupid. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right I you staying for dinner? Cause like dinner's ready. Sure. I mean, we gotta we gotta read the rest of this anyways. Are we going down to eat dinner first? Whatever is up to you. I don't care. Rock, paper, scissors for if, if uh, you win, we continue. <laughs> you need to stop choosing scissors. <laughs> I tried to calm... Here, we'll do until the next part. I tried to calm Joe down, but hell, even I was per... What the fuck? I hate this thing. Uh, I looked down into the box down? and realized there were more videos, but I did not want to look what was next. I popped the first video out of... Oh, wait, yeah. There's three more videos, Joe, but Jesus Christ, I'm afraid of what they show. He hung his head into his hands and began to stomp his feet in dis- What is he, having a tantrum? And began to stomp his feet in disbelief. As we sat in silence on the couch, our attentions turned somewhere else. We heard a noise that was similar to something dragging the car across the floor. It was coming from the basement. Okay, now in this transition, we will be fed three- Two, one, and we're back. Uh, after an altercation with Dog, welcome. Iris has been scarred for the rest of their life. That's already happened, but. <coughs> Part two! Shh, did you hear that? Hold on. I'm, I'm getting to part two. You can get there faster? Come on. Boom. <clears throat> Shh, did you hear that? My attention was brought towards the basement door for a moment. I stood in silence, closing my eyes to listen as closely as I could for the noise I heard. 
Joe Mama wasn't as patient as I was. Imagine that. Hear what? I didn't hear shit. Almost on cue, the noise appeared again. The sound of something dragging. Joe's eyes became as wide as his mouth, and he began to back away from the basement door in fear. <coughs> what the fuck was that? He cried. I placed my index finger over my lips and proceeded to tell him to be quiet. I saw Joe gulp down his f gulp his fear down his throat, but for some strange reason, my fear was overshadowed by my <coughs> excuse me willingness to get to the bottom of what was going on. Against my better judgment and Joe's wishes, I opened the door to the basement. What the fuck are you doing? Let's get out of here! His pleas fell on deaf ears. Look, if you want to leave, fine, but I'm going to go down there and see what that noise was. It was probably nothing. Nothing? Jesus Christ, we just watched a video of what looks like a young me and some fucking creature in our basement, and now we hear a noise coming from the basement, and you want to tell me it's nothing? I just wanted him to calm down. Truth be told, I wanted him to leave so I could be alone and ha not have to listen to his constant bitching. Leave if you want. I'm going down there. Joe shook his head in disbelief. You're fucking crazy. I'm out of here. And that was that. I watched as Joe Mama grabbed his coat I'll take my Oscar now for uh, best voice actor <laughs> in a Dark Mirror podcast. <laughs> I watched as Joe grabbed his coat and some belongings before leaving the house. Perhaps I should have done the same, but my curiosity got the better of me. What's that saying about curiosity and the cat? Doesn't bode well for me, does okay, it? Okay, uh, can we quickly talk about how, how I knew I probably should have, but my curiosity got the better of me has been the biggest cliche in these creepy bosses. I feel like in every single episode we've said something similar to that yeah. along those lines. Well, you know what they say about curiosity and the cat. <laughs> I looked down to the bottom of the stairs leading to the basement, and nothing seemed out of place. Slowly, I walked down the stairs, making sure to grab the railing with each step. Once I made it to the bottom, I flipped on the light at the end of the stairwell. I looked around for a moment until I saw the familiar picture that once hung below the window, which was now laying on the ground. With a sigh of relief, I walked towards the photo to hang it back up. While I was doing that, however, the, da the, yeah, the dragging noise appeared again. Oh no. I quickly jumped and turned to look behind me, but there was nothing. I looked at the empty black abyss that was the space under the stairs as I slowly walked towards it. It appeared to be a black hole, and the curiosity was its gravitational pull sucking me on. Sucking me on. Sucking you on. <laughs> sucking me in. Now this is a completely different story. <laughs> I grabbed my phone to turn on the... <laughs> Fletcher said vicious little beast. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed my phone to turn on the flashlight again, but just as before, there was nothing under the stairs but dust and dead bugs. Another sigh of relief. For that moment. I tucked my phone back into my pocket and went to head back upstairs. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move. It moved incredibly fast. Is this another trailer? <laughs> <laughs> as I turned my head, my eyes became wide in fear. I was staring at a familiar sight. The sight of the creature in the video. It was taller than I imagined. Skinny, lanky, with arms that dragged across the cement. Its I think I'll call it a teaser. <laughs> <laughs> its, next was its, next. its neck was long and skinny, but its head was small. Its face had a pair of two dark eyes, practically black. No nose, but a smile, if you could call it that. Which was crooked to the left side of its face. It stood there, staring at me, as if I were its prey. The um, creature... Okay, okay. It uh, reminds so, me of something, I just don't know. No, no, I know what it reminds me of. So, these fuckers from Kamino and Star Wars? The Kaminoans? Not those, that's not what I'm thinking of. Oh, I was thinking the fucking long neck aliens from Kamino. I'm thinking of... Do you pronounce it Kamano? No, it's Kaminoans, that's what they call them. Not Kaminoans. Kamino these nuts. Continue reading. <laughs> but it's a it's a monster from something. I don't remember. It's like all stitched up and shit. Continue reading. <clears throat> it stood there staring at me as if, uh, yeah, as if I were its prey. The creature was letting off a hideous odor that smelled like a mixture of rotten eggs and what I could only describe as roadkill. The creature bent down. I watched as its knees went above his shoulders in a crouched position, which seemed... 
physically impossible. Then again, everything about this seems Do we need impossible. to do a physical demonstration again? Uh, yes. Okay, so... It went... So, his knees went above his shoulders in a crouched position? Yeah, like this. Uh, the camera won't be able to see It this. seems pretty easy. I mean... Yeah, like... Come on. It's literally just... This is a handheld camera, I mean, dude. I can almost do it. I can get it to my shoulders, but my legs aren't long enough to go past. But this is essentially what it is. Yeah. Ugh. Thank you, everyone, for entertaining that. Yep. Now we're cooking. Again, my legs aren't long enough. Ugh. Yeah, your dick isn't long enough, so I... <laughs> That's what Eclipse is. <laughs> This is about to be another Will Smith Chris Rock situation. <laughs> uh, the creature began to sniff around before crawling toward me slowly. Its eyes maintained focus on me while it slowly crawled towards my stoic body. Its head was shaking back and forth uncontrollably as it crawled toward me. <clears throat> I had to make a move. I needed to make a move. Without hesitation, I bolted up the stairs and slammed the door behind me. I grabbed the box of videotapes, the VCR, and left the home, not looking back. I threw the box of tapes in my in the back of my Ford Focus. Ah, uh, yes, very sponsored. important to the not not sponsored. Very important to the plot. Yeah, uh, Ford Focus, and left the driveway as fast as I could. I must have hit every red light on my way out of town. I refused to look back, fearing I'd see the creature. In a panic, I grabbed my phone and dialed Joe Mama to talk to him, but the phone kept ringing. You've reached Joe. Leave a message. God damn it, Joe. I hung up the phone and tossed it to the side as I thought about what to do next. With nearly 400 miles back to my home on campus, I had no other option but to rent a hotel room for the night. Pulling up to a Motel 8, I booked a room <coughs> for the night. <coughs> Jesus. I booked a hotel room for the night and thought over everything in my head. Did I see what I thought I saw, or was my mind playing tricks? How did a creature that size remain hidden while I was down there? I sat on the edge of the hotel bed, still in disbelief. I looked over at the box of videotapes and the VCR. This really is just more of a hornet in text format. It was, literally, yeah. Looking back, wasting time to get that fucking VCR was stupid, but there had to be more of this story. I had to- I was able to plug the VCR into the hotel television and went over everything in my head again. Should I watch the next tape? Should I go directly to the authorities? With a deep breath, I inserted the next tape and waited to see what was next. This is literally Marvel Hornets. Yeah, yeah, characters. yeah. Yeah. The video started out like the last one, only this time where there wasn't a boy strapped down to a, a, into a bed. Instead, the two white-dressed individuals stood off to the side with a pad and pen, jotting down something that I couldn't read. There was a jump cut and my stomach began to turn. The camera was fixated on the creature, which was standing still against the cold cement wall of what looked like my basement. The creature's eyes were closed and its mouth seemed to have disappeared. Its face was completely blank. Suddenly, the dark eyes opened and the crooked smile appeared on the creature. It did not move, but it seemed to be awake. The two white-dressed individuals approached the creature and inserted a syringe into its elongated neck before the video cut. Okay, so they're, they're just investigating the creature. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently being KKK members at the, same to at, the yeah, at the same time. And also at the same time, giving up your children while they're unconscious. Sounds like someone would do for Slender Man. They're not even serving the creature. It looks like they're just investigating. After another jump cut, the camera was pointed up the stairs towards the basement door. The door was closed, but not for long. The door opened and I saw my father slowly walking down the stairs to the basement. He seemed to be in a trance, and his eyes weren't what I remembered. They were pitch black. The creature was eating. What it was eating, I am not entirely sure. It was slumped against the wall, picking up pieces of food with its long fingers and forcing it into its mouth. The creature turned its head 180 degrees like an owl and was looking directly at the camera static. I couldn't contain myself anymore. I got to my feet and headed to the bathroom, vomiting from what I just saw. The creature made me physically ill just by the way it looked and how abnormal it was. Leaning over the toilet, thoughts rushed through my head. What was that creature? Are there more like it? Flush. 
I flushed my vomit down the toilet and went to get some rest. Everything from that night wore me out and I could decipher more of the videos tomorrow after a decent night's sleep. I awoke the next morning to the sound of someone knocking on the door to my hotel room. In a groggy daze, I opened the door to see nobody there. When I looked down, I nearly jumped backward. Sitting on the ground was a single videotape. I gulped my fear down, my throat shaking from head to toe. This is literally just Alex giving a tape to Jay. I have a note, but I'll save it till, till after the story, as it's more appropriate there than just randomly joking. I picked up the tape and looked around the hall of my floor but saw no one. I closed my door, locked it, and sat up on the edge of my bed. What was this tape? What was on it? Shit, I was too afraid to even find out. I had to talk myself into it, but fuck. I wish I didn't. I put the tape into the VCR and braced myself for the worst. What I saw sent chills down my spine. It was Joe, but not as a child, but as an adult, wearing the same clothes he was wearing last night. Behind him was the creature, resting both hands on his shoulders, standing tall with its head out of the view of the camera. Joe's head was lowered, looking down at the ground below his feet. He seemed to be asleep or unaware of what was going on, but he was breathing. Both Joe and the creature stood completely still for what seemed like hours, with the creature's hands placed firmly on his shoulders, tightening with every grip of that passing moment. I watched in horror as the creature then dragged its tongue across the cheek of Joe before the video cut the static. The creature had Joe. The creature was still in that house. But that begs to question, who was filming it? Tripods Advertisements. exist. Advertisements. Tripods exist. So Joe was filming it? Hmm. Definitely ain't the creature. It's not that smart from the looks of it. Hey, don't judge someone by their looks. He's trying his best! That fucking trying to, like, fucking murder them, but, like, he's trying his best either way. <laughs> Part 3! Jesus Christ, this can't be happening! I mumbled those words under my breath after watching the tape of the creature and Joe. Joe went back to that house after I left and tried to save me, but in return he was taken by the creature himself. All I could think of was every time I wished harm on Joe for something he said or did. I'd take it all back just to make sure he was safe. Thoughts spun around my head like a merry-go-round. I knew the time of this was... I knew time was of the essence, but I had no idea what to do or how to go about it. I had to go back. I had to save Joe. As I left my hotel room, every bad thought imaginable began to creep its way into my mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. From Joe being killed to the creature being loose outside of the house, I couldn't shake the bad feeling. What is it, like SCP-096 that can't be killed by conventional means? When I... Maybe a good smack on the ass. <laughs> They never tried that, so maybe that is. When I arrived at the house, the driveway was empty. Where's my nose, bro? <laughs> no sign of Joe's red pickup truck as I had imagined. I rushed into the house to find the basement door ajar, which was a bad sign. Really? Is that a bad sign? I think that's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I ran as fast as I could, screaming Joe's name. Joe! Joe! But I heard nothing in return. I swung the basement door open and ran down the stairs until... Darkness. I guess you could say he went... in the darkness. Hex, no one here is going to understand that but us! I'm not sure what happened, but I swung in the <laughs> darkness and with a gash above my right eye. The pain above my eye was throbbing and I could feel my heart beat in my ears and in the back of my head. As I blindly stretched my hand out to feel around the darkness, I found what I assumed was the cement wall of the basement. Cold, harsh, and rigid. The wall served as a guide for the darkness. There was no light... There was no light source at all, and my eyes have yet to adjust to the harsh darkness that was clouding me. As I blindly continued to feel my way around, I started to hear unfamiliar... and unfamiliar... I started to hear unfamiliar noises. They sounded like footsteps coming from above, yeah, above me. I gulped my fear down my throat and completely and compl contemplated what I had to do. That's not good. Hello? Oh, no. no. Hello? TJ? Anyone here? That was Joe's voice. There was a sense of salvation that I hadn't felt in a long time. Joe, I'm down here in the basement! I screamed. I heard the door open and a beam of light appeared from the top of the stairs. 
I started making my way towards the light where the light source where I met up with Joe. Fuck, I thought you were dead, Jeff said as he smirked. What the fuck ha happened to your head? We walked up the stairs to the living room where I collapsed on the couch. The bright lights of the living room caused my headache to intensify beyond belief. Joe grabbed me a wet cloth to stop the bleeding for a bit. No, Joe, are you okay? I said, looking at him with one eye closed. Yeah, why wouldn't I be? You're the one I've been worrying about. Look, I'm sorry for last night, you know, the whole leaving you behind thing. Just that shit really creeped me out, you know? I sighed. Oh, how did, how did you know I was here? Joe smirked. Because you're like a real-life Scooby-Doo detective or some shit. I knew you'd be back here at some time after what we found. What happened last night after I left? Watch any other tapes? I didn't know how to talk to Joe about the tape I received at the hotel, but I had to tell him what I saw. Do me a favor, alright? Go to my car and grab the tapes and the V-cigar. I have something to show you. Joe shook his head. I'm not watching any more of that shit. You must be crazy. Maybe I was. Joe, listen to me. It's important. Please. With a sigh, Joe went to my car and grabbed what I asked. When he walked back into the house, he threw the box of tapes and VCR onto the couch. You set it up. You're welcome. Nice to see Joe was as cheery as always. The tape with Joe and the creature was still in the VCR, so when I plugged it into the television and hit play, I told Joe to watch closely. Joe watched in horror as he saw himself standing with the creature directly behind him. When I left last night, I stayed at a hotel for the night. When I woke up, this is what I found. That's you, Joe. That's you and the creature. Oh, really? <laughs> I couldn't tell. I don't remember any of this. What the fuck is going on? I don't know either, but this happened sometime last night after I left. You remember coming back last night? What? Fuck no, dude. When I left, I drove my ass right to Diana's. His girlfriend's. House and never looked back. I only came back here because I couldn't get a hold of you and was getting worried. I figured you'd back here, and lo and behold, there you are in the basement of a, with a cut above your head. Nothing, yeah, nothing seemed to make sense. Joe didn't remember coming back, but on the video he was with the creature. Perhaps the creature followed Joe to Diane's and, no, oh, Diana's, and dragged him there without him knowing. PJ, I don't remember anything after I got to Diana's. Last thing I remember was falling asleep in bed and waking up the next morning. No dreams, no nightmares, nothing. This doesn't make sense. I placed my head on t into my hands in disbelief, trying to think of what this means. Joe stood up from the couch. Be fucking honest with oh, me, Lance. Uh, no, that's me. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be fucking honest with me, E. Last night, in the basement, did you see anything? You said you left to go to a hotel after I left, but I feel like you're not telling me the entire story. What did you see, TJ? Alright, so we know TJ is J, and Joe is Tim. Yeah. Yep. I had to tell him. I went down there after you left to search about- to search around after hearing that noise. I saw the creature, Joe. It was more disturbing than I imagined. That creature lives in that basement. I saw all the life drain from Joe as he la looked at me in complete disbelief. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to leave, lock the door, and never turn back. Let someone else deal with this. TJ, if you were smart, you would do the same. Please, as your brother, I am begging you, leave. Just leave. Go back home. But Joe, we have to go inside. Okay, more people will understand that reference than you fucking saying in the darkness. <laughs> Reluctantly, I... <laughs> Reluctantly, I nodded my head and grabbed my things, including the tapes on the VCR. Leave them too. I couldn't just leave them. There were still two more tapes to be watched, and perhaps it provided clues as to what this creature was and how to stop it. Let's make a deal. We'll watch the last two tapes, and then we'll leave and never look back. Sound good? Reluctantly, Joe agreed. I popped the next tape in and sat down on the couch and prepared for the worst. Nah. <clears throat> The tape started out different from the others. It wasn't the basement, but rather Joe's bedroom. Sleeping soundly in his Buzz Lightyear pajamas was Joe as a kid. I could tell this was causing Joe to feel uncomfortable, but for some reason we just kept watching. Suddenly, young Joe sat up abruptly in his bed. His eyes were as black as night, and he seemed to be in a trance. He left the room, walking as if he were sleepwalking. 
The camera continued to roll for what seemed like hours until young Joe made his way back into the view of the camera. He laid back down and went to sleep as if nothing happened. Suddenly our attention was brought towards the edge of the bed, where we saw a long, lanky hand reach out and grab the bed sheet. The creature stood up and over the young Joe. The, <laughs> the young Joe. The creature got onto the bed quietly and began to stare at him. Joe did not seem to notice. Just like before, the creature began to drag its tongue across the cheek of young Joe before stepping off of the bed and disappearing into the background. The video ended shortly after. Advertisements. Now, oh, Jesus Christ, Joe. What the fuck was that? I stopped in sentence as I looked over at Joe who had a sick and demented smile on his face. His eyes were black, as black as night. No evil shall escape his sight. <laughs> Is that the fucking Green Lantern, no? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know that, and I'm a deep, and I, I'm a fucking nerd. As light as day, as black as night, no evil shall escape my sight. No, I don't remember the rest of it. <laughs> and there was a, a smell creeping into the room, an all too familiar scent. The scent of the creature. Part 4. What the fuck?! I was taken aback by what was happening to Joe. Dead, yeah, no. though. But Joe, tiff, I can't speak. I was taken aback by what was happening to Joe, but as, but just as I was staring, starting to back away, Joe would speak. What? What's wrong? I was almost speechless. You, your eyes, the smell, just... Everything was coming out in intervals rather than all together. Joe would shake his head with a smirk. Everything was cut. Oh, shit. What the fuck I are think, you reading? <laughs> I think you're seeing shit, TJ. What are you talking about? I was dumbfounded. I began to sniff deeper and deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Is that piss I smell? <laughs> you don't smell that? I said as I covered my mouth and nose with my sleeve. It smells rancid, dude. It's the same scent I smelled when I saw, you know, the creature. Joe shook his head as if he had no idea what I was talking about. I think you need to sleep. You're losing your mind, man. You're going insane. Maybe he was right. Maybe I just envisioned everything I saw moments before. Maybe it was all just my mind playing tricks on me. With a sigh, I reluctantly agreed. As I got up to leave with Joe, he would wrap his arm around my neck. Look, I don't know what was on those videotapes, but we need to just stop. This isn't healthy and it's driving you crazy. You're seeing shit and smelling raw eggs? That isn't right. I sighed. You're right. At that moment, my eyes widened. I told Joe I smelled something, but I didn't tell him what I smelled. Joe? I asked, quivering my bottom lip. Yeah, what's up? I gulped. I never told you what the smell was. How did you know it was rotten eggs? Joe was quiet. I stared at him as he flashed a smile. I jumped backwards as Joe flung himself onto me. Kinky. I resisted as much as I could, but I knew there was nothing I could do. Joe, now looking more like the creature, stuck its tongue out and began to drag it across my cheek. I was frozen in fear. I couldn't move any part of my body, no matter how hard I tried. I laid there completely motionless as the creature dragged its serpent-like tongue across my cheek. Its breath was unbearable, but no matter how much I squirmed or screamed for help, it would not loosen its grip on me. The creature extended its finger and dragged it across my cheek, drawing blood in the process. I stared into its eyes and felt like I was staring face to face with Satan himself. Accepting my fate, I closed my eyes and accepted the worst. Wait, what? Oh, expected the worst. That's all I remember. I awoke... Uh, sometime later in the familiar surroundings of a hospital. The white walls and the taste of anesthetic made me feel safe, as well as sick to my stomach. I was greeted by my fiancé and a group of doctors. Oh my god! I, my fiancé <laughs> screamed as she began to cry. Are you okay? Are you okay? There was a tube down my throat which was preventing me from answering, but I nodded my head. Soon enough, the doctors came in to remove my feeding tube from my throat. I can't describe the feeling, but it's nothing I wanted to experience again. Well, I guess he knows what it feels like to deep throat. <laughs> I was in a coma for a solid week. What the fuck? 
A neighbor of my parents found me in the basement at the bottom, knocked out, knocked completely unconscious. Apparently, the front door was open and the neighbor grew worried. I'm alive, thanks to him. <clears throat> Nothing made sense to me. Where's Joe? I questioned. My family- God fucking damn it. What? They were doing so good. <laughs> Where's Joe? Okay. Mama? I questioned. My fiance had a look of confusion on her face. This is what what's making me say that, honey. Do you not remember? Hey. Oh, she said, wiping a tear from her eye. I shook my head. TJ, Joe died in that accident with your parents. My entire world. You know the most cliche shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? The void. The store. I don't even remember what that was called. The un. The unknown Unos abyss. The unknown abyss is something like that. We're not comparing this to the unknown abyss. No, it's it's better than that at least. Oh yeah, definitely. My entire world flashed before my eyes. How was that possible? I had just seen Joe moments before I blacked out. Right? Was everything just my subconscious running wild while I was look while I was knocked unconscious? What about the videotapes? I questioned. What videotapes, babe? Why do you sound like Joe? I don't <laughs> fucking know. <laughs> I just kind of defaulted to that. <laughs> the videotapes of my parents' house. Where are they? They were in a brown box on the coffee table. My fiance shook her head as if she had no idea what I was talking about. Everything took place in my head, from Joe to the videotapes to the creature. Everything was a part of my subconscious. I felt sick to my stomach, perhaps from the anesthetic. My fiance ran her fingers through my hair to calm me down, but nothing seemed real. Hell, was this even real? After a few days in the hospital to recover, I was allowed to go home. My fiancé told me everything. I received a call away at a college that my parents and brother died in a car accident. Joe was driving them somewhere when the car slid off an embankment and crashed. I didn't have the heart or the stomach to tell my wife what happened, but I had to. I told her about Joe. I told her about the basement, the creature, the videotapes, everything. She smiled and ran her fingers through my head. And it was a way of calming me. Will you stop? <laughs> <laughs> it was her way of calming me down, and it always worked. Sounds like you have a wild imagination. Now it's a mix of the two. I'm scared. <laughs> I guess the brain works in mysterious ways. In a sense, despite losing my brother and my parents, things seemed normal for once. The entire ordeal, even though it was played out in my subconscious, was over. I was a bit confused as to why I was in the house to begin with, but everything started to come back to me. After the funeral, I went to the house to get the belongings. My question is... Oh wait, where is it telling me? Oh yeah, I must have blacked out shortly after the, at that and, ma and imagined the entire thing, including Joe and my subconscious. I don't remember blacking out, but I remember Joe vividly. I remember him smoking one of Dad's cigars. I remember him freaking out about the videotapes and whatnot. Everything seemed so real, and the fact that it wasn't just left me completely dumbfounded. Why doesn't he check his card history to see if he actually paid for a hotel room? That is a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> my question is, how did he end up, like, what happened to him? For him to, if it was all fake, how did he end up in the basement? Knocked out. Maybe he just randomly blacked out due to exhaustion or something? I don't know. While trying to get collect the things, I went back. I went back home for a few days. I went back, and that was just the thing. I went back to the home a few days later just to ensure my subconscious was right. The basement was as I remember it, but no matter how much time I spent there, I never did find the videotapes. They were gone, or perhaps they were never there to begin with. As I sat in the basement, I sighed with relief and walked back up to the living room to shut the door behind. me. I can't speak. Are there frogs? Yeah. Frogs is a thing. Yeah. Why are you acting like I'm never- I don't know what a fucking frog is. <laughs> well, yeah, frogs, <laughs> frogs exist. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> As I sat in the basement, I sighed with a relief and walked back up to the living room. Shut the door behind me, locked the door, and never looked back. Eventually, the home became property of the bank and a family of four moved in shortly after. That part of my life was behind me. I graduated and we both moved into a new two, nice two bedroom home in the city. She became pregnant with our first child, expected here in a few months. It's a boy, we're naming him Elijah after my grandfather. We're hoping to have another child sometime after Elijah is born, hopefully a girl. 
We just want to start a family and live happily ever after, as corny as that sounds. The wedding is planned after the birth of Elijah. Damn, the kid's gonna be a bastard. Her parents weren't too happy with- That's fucking- That's a fucking terrible joke, man. Who said it was a joke? That's just facts. <laughs> Her parents weren't too happy we conceived before we were married, but they'll get over. It's not like they have a choice. Sex before marriage? It's better than hand-holding before marriage. Or eye contact. Or eye contact. But that's yeah. why I'm not looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> As for the blackouts, I haven't had them since the last incident in the basement. Sure, I su- oh, Wait, hold on. We have to- <laughs> <laughs> uh, His entire- uh, Thing stopped. Yeah, his feed refreshed. Oh, you have to go back all the way down? Yeah, but I'll remember where it is, because there, there's that little weird break. Found it. Uh, as for the blackouts, I haven't had them since the last incident in the basement. Sure, I still think about what happened, but I have to remind myself it was all in my subconscious. That's not how you say that word. All in my subconscious. None of it actually happened. It may have seemed real, but not everything is what it seems. Things were good for the most part, but... Lately, my wife has been acting weird. She keeps saying I've changed and grown a bit irritable. I've done nothing that I can think of. Perhaps it's just pregnancy hormones or something like that. She got me sleepwalking a few times that night and said I looked as if I were in a trance. The house we just bought, which we thought was our dream home, turned out not to be the perfect paradise we had hoped. We think of moving. My wife keeps smelling a foul odor in the home and she feels like it's going to be bad for the baby. She keeps trying to get me to fix it, but I have no idea what she's talking about. I don't smell anything. Okay, so it was real! Or was it? <laughs> Come on, Liquid Dookie. This is a whole lot of Liquid Dookie. <laughs> okay, overall, it I, I am surprised that we read an actual good story on the Dark Mirror podcast. It was definitely a whole lot better than the last couple of ones we there, read. It was, uh, like... Marginally. From the previous one in this one to the one below, one in the previous episode, that a was a better. breath of fresh air. Yes. More original. Yeah, I think yeah, I lo bad. liked it more just because we read two average to really bad creepypastas And now beforehand. there's something at least a little better. Yeah. Like, I think everything up to ooh, a little was bit. Was it real? Was it not real? That's where it kind of just stopped for me. Yeah. Honest, like, that is a cliche. Yeah. I, I feel like creepypastas leave the ambiguity of it just shoon horn in. I, now, maybe if it was, like, for example, he looked on the card and saw, like, he had paid for a hotel, but his wife was saying none of it actually happened, then maybe it's a little better, because... You know, yeah, if he actually investigated further into yeah, that Yeah, because, I mean, of course, like, if you have a dream, of course you're going to remember it doesn't mean like it's a real thing but if you have proof that it actually happened for example a credit card transaction then that grounds it more into reality than just a possible dream you know? I, yeah i will say another thing this is also the wrong wrong genre for this it's we keep drawing comparisons to marvel hornets this could have been a pretty good web series it could like hint hint at what we're doing next on the dark manor no <laughs> Actually, I, I, uh, I, mean, I, I would like to do that. I would, yeah. yeah, I would like to adapt that just just to fix the ending. <laughs> Does this mean I have to be Joe? No, I'm fucking Joe. You're gonna fuck Joe? No, I'm Joe. Oh, you're gonna fuck Joe, so you're gonna be Diana. No! <laughs> okay, so... The creature, I do like how Originally. it's described. Yeah, it is pretty original. It's not just another or kind of. It's not some weird Slenderman thing. It's not a. It's not a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, spooky! Oh. It's not like it's kind of a mix between in the kind of humanoid type creatures and then the more like feral, feral yeah. ones, and like that's great. Yeah, I would love to see what this 
creator has visualized for what they would imagine this creature to look like. Have you seen Gravity Falls? Yeah, the like statue the of summer, it reminds me. Yeah, closer. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> not not exactly the face, but like just the body in general reminds me of it. Yeah, I. Here's my personal opinion on how to fix the story. This shit actually happens. Yeah. Joe Joe would still be alive. i and then the creature's entire thing is that it was slowly implanting in its yeah maybe itself into the thoughts of Joe and his parents and the parents were the people in the white costumes because we never that's really, actually that's what i was we, the yeah that's time. what i thought the entire time that the parents were the ones in the costumes yeah. or maybe it's like joe did end up going home but the creature followed him no well that but it also like Someone maybe maybe it, no maybe it's the form of like shape-shifting or just like some weird like, oh, low oh key like, projection like type of yeah like if pre if or it was able to like create some type of like mind fucky lucky thing to TJ that you know this was his brother but it wasn't actually his brother. Yeah, that is also a good idea. Mind fucky lucky. <laughs> <laughs> like mainly, I just want a bunch of this stuff expanded upon. Like ambiguity is great, but I feel like if you were to have if you're going to have multiple parts of this story. Then you better fucking explain what's going on, and don't cop it out with just oh he was in a coma. Yeah, for the most part things were explained okay, out th well this until is... we got to the apparently you blacked out you were in a yeah, coma. Yeah, dark week. dark Hold manner on. writing tip. Oh, it was all a dream is the worst fucking twist that you can ever do. Unless that's the point of the pasta, you know, it was just a horrible fucking nightmare. Unless you can make it very obvious that it's supposed to be a dream Yeah, unless it's of... included in the subtext, which it wasn't in the first three parts. Yeah. So, unless it's supposed to be a dream, don't fucking say it was a dream. <laughs> and even then, refrain from it being a dream. Even, no matter what. Like, it's, you don't even have to say, like, it's a he very woke up and realized it was a dream. Maybe you could just say, he woke up in his bed after all this happened He didn't know what it was. He went out to get milk. Everything was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you get the point of what I'm trying to go but, here. Try and make it look, okay. So, it's like No End House, how where he thought he was free, but he actually wasn't free. Yeah, exactly like that. No End House, perfect example. I will say, first three parts, I would give a nine out of ten. Yeah. Honestly, then things went down. I, I would give four, part four a uh, six so, out of ten. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> only because of the shitty twist. That's yeah. probably the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Liquid Dookie first. Fuck Hit you, us up, we'll off. fix your pasta. <laughs> first off, Liquid Dookie, fuck your name. I know you're not watching this, buddy boy, but fuck you anyways. I'm talking straight to you. Uh, I, I, I do not speak for this, this man. I respect you. Don't like your ending, but I respect you. I agree, but fuck you, Liquid Dookie. You like Liquid Dookie, huh? This has been the Dark Manor Podcast. I'm Iris. I'm Hax. Good night.